So uh, again, so for today's um, event, we're going to be um, talking about what the California legislator, legislature does and how to get involved. And so um, this is, of course, leading up to our biggest advocacy day in the year, which is the Muslim Day at the Capitol, um, which is usually we happens in Sacramento and we go there every um, year and we usually have hundreds, you know, six to 700 people coming, but inshallah we're gonna be doing this virtually. And so this is gonna be a great opportunity to, to do this online and virtually. This is, will be the second year that we're, we're doing this. Um, so now me and Samina are gonna take a few minutes um, to share a little bit about what makes one of the um, really crucial tactics of um, engaging our legislators successful, and that is when we are able to go ahead and actually speak with our legislators um, in meetings. And um, this is something that, you know, CARE has been doing for years, and uh, some of you have actually participated in, and that's going to be the focus. This is the tactic that we're going to be focusing on um, today. And you know, we aren't going to go into everything super in depth. Like Muhammad had said, it's meant to be a very broad overview. We want you to be able to actually, you know, digest this information. And then we can always talk about other things more in depth in future workshops. But um, as far as this tactic of meeting with legislators, so just to go over some of the basics, there's three general phases that you're, you're talking about, right? So somebody needs to actually coordinate the meeting and schedule it and set it up. And um, then you actually have the meeting and then you have meeting follow-up afterwards, you know, to send your thank yous and to follow up on um, the discussion. But what we're gonna be focusing on is within the actual discussion of the meeting, what should that look like? Um, so if you all, you know, continue participating with CARE, we generally take care of the scheduling, the follow-up, right? But where we really, really uh, rely on community members just like you, is in the actual meeting execution. There's several roles that are really important. And um, that is because we have a pretty big endeavor that we're trying to achieve, you know, in, in this tactic, which is in that 15 minutes, you know, or sometimes less that we have with this decision maker, we're asking them for their support or opposition of something that is a proposed policy that could become law. And either we support it or we oppose it. And because they are the decision makers and they are going to be taking a vote, we need to check in with them, let them know our perspective and ask them to either you know, support or oppose. And so um, in that, you, know, you have somebody who is the meeting lead, who's kind of facilitating the conversation, opening it up. You have somebody who's taking notes and you have somebody who is, um, it could be one person, it could be a couple of people who are really telling the story. Um, and so that's the that's what we really want to focus on for the rest of this workshop is what is that role of the storyteller. Um, but before I say a little bit more about that, I'm going to actually um, allow Samina to share some other general tips about making a successful meeting happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I think basically, I think what's, what's really helpful is actually it's not just helpful; it's crucial is to to really know about the issues and to read some of the, the tips and tools that we have um, to offer prior to the meeting. And so CARE will be you know, sending you information about the bills, about the legislation, whether it be fact sheets, whether it be like a sample script or whatnot. So please like make sure to um, you know, look through the emails with CARE staff, that CARE staff has sent um, you know, with that that information and then also with the the call-in information um which will let you know okay who are you speaking with um and when you're uh, um and when you're meeting with them again you are going to be addressing well, well if you're meeting with staff you address them by their first name but when you're meeting with legislators you're going to be addressing them by their title um so you would say okay senator skinner or assembly member bonta um you don't call them by their first name so um again you know we need to keep our you know keep ourselves professional and um and make sure that that we address them with uh, respect and then, you know, usually most of the meetings that we're going to be having are on Zoom, but uh, sometimes you also have um, Microsoft Teams, uh, but make sure that your tech is ready to go and that you're logged in. Um, so try to log in early um, so that, you know, we know that your camera's working, your microphone's working and whatnot. Um, also make sure that you look 
as professional as possible. Um, I'm not, we're not expecting you to wear a tux or anything, but, you know, make sure that, you know, you are, are um, cleanly dressed and, um, you know, oftentimes men feel more comfortable with the suit or at least with a button down shirt or a tie. Um, so business or business casual would be um, really great to have. Make sure that also the location where you're having your call, it's quiet. So there's no like, kids banging on their toys or I, I usually have a problem though because my cat usually <laughs> jumps in and zoom bombs all of my calls so I'm actually quite surprised uh, he hasn't yet so <laughs> but try to keep uh, the the place quiet uh, make sure that it's well lit you know what I end up using is this this light over here because without it it's quite dark so I have this little light and I think that it's, it's helpful um so yeah um, also, you know, make sure that there's like nothing, no clutter in the background. Um, what's great with Zoom and also Microsoft Teams is that they have like a way in order to kind of, you have different backgrounds or to, to basically, um, what is it called? Um, fade out the background. So that's always really helpful. So meetings generally are about, like they can take anywhere between 15 minutes to a half an hour. So make sure that you see how long the meeting is scheduled for. And that way you can plan to say what you want to say. So, you know, oftentimes people don't look at it and end up going off on like a long tangent and not realizing that, wait, we only have 15 minutes for the speech. So let's, or for the meeting. So let's just keep it clear and concise. And so, um, you know, to just make sure about the, the meeting time. Um, it's, you know, and I think that this is really important, especially given that if you have um, a limited time to speak and you're speaking on something that's very like emotional or very triggering, I mean, it's it's just important to know like how much time, but if you have like a longer time, then please, by all means, I mean, take that time and really share how this piece of legislation does impact you and impacts your community. So um, again, I, I don't want to, you know, um, I don't want to prevent you from taking the time to share that. Um, but again, just knowing how much time you have is really important. Um, so again, you know, I, I think that these are just really kind of no brainers, but I think it's, it's just important to remember this, that like, you know, smile, like say, thank you. Um, be pleasant, you know, because again, uh, what I say is that this is this might be the first interaction that they're having with a Muslim or the Muslim community. So we always have to put our best foot forward because we are representing the California Muslim community, which is like one million, you know, or more Muslims. So I think it's it's I know that's a, a lot of pressure on your shoulders, but just you know to remember that again we are a representation of them, and so we need to make sure that we behave in a respectful manner. Um, we also need to to stay on track um, and just and take up just enough time to allow for other people to speak. Um, so you know if we're finding ourselves speaking for like twenty minutes and we only have like ten more minutes left and five other speakers, that's not very helpful. So we want to make sure that we kind of give um, people like a chance to speak, kind of divide up the roles. Um, so, so that's um, really helpful. Also, give enough time for the legislator or the staff to be able to respond to your comments or questions. Oftentimes, like we might have a meeting that the community is talking for 29 minutes and you only have one more minute left. And we're like, wait, what, what did the legislator think? And what, what were their thoughts on this? So, you know, yeah, so make sure just pay attention to the time. Um, if you forget to mention something and that's oftentimes happens to me, um, we could always follow up with them later. Um, so please like mention that to care that, hey, I forgot to mention this, please like, you know, follow up them or, you know, or you can follow up with them as well. Um, so I think, you know, when in doubt, follow your group lead. So we should have, you're going to be having one group leader for each group. And so they're not going to be the ones who are going to be taking over the whole meeting, but they are going to be there to help you and chime in if there's any like technical issues or any tricky questions or any awkward stumbles. So, um, but again, I have full faith in you. We've been doing this for, you know, so many years and it's been an incredible experience for so many people. So honestly, I, I truly believe that we're going to have a, a really great time and we're both going to, it'll be a fulfilling experience for you.
and I'm going to pass it over to Elisa. Thank you, Samina. And, you know, Samina and some of our staff have been doing this for so long. And I just want to say that we are really in good hands with um, our entire team. They're really awesome. And you all as community members have a lot of experience, you know, and as partners, you all have a lot to offer as well. So again, we're in this together and everything that we're going over right now, super quickly and rapid fire, um, you know, we will continue to review this information time and time again, you know, um, to encourage more and more people to get involved. And just going back to the different roles of um, what is involved in a meeting. So um, I wanna focus on the role of the storyteller. So again, the lead is going to open the meeting. They're gonna actually introduce the um, bills that, you know, we wanna discuss. Um, and then the person who goes next is the storyteller, which again, it might be one person or depend, if you have time, it could be two or even three people. Um, and what they're really going to demonstrate is why do we care about this issue, right? What are the universal values that um, are implicated in promoting this policy? And um, what are examples that, you know, different storytellers could bring up? either from their personal lived experience or somebody that they know, someone in their family or friends, um, or just something from your personal perspective, trying to really show, right? Not just telling the legislator, please support this bill or please oppose this bill because as they say, right, that could have been done over email, right? The whole purpose of having this FaceTime and sitting down or having the Zoom and um, talking to people is to share your story so that they have more, so that their knowledge is, um, you know, really deep and um, they, they have a sense of what would the impact be to the community. And then again, the most important thing <laughs> at the end is to make sure that you make a clear ask. Make sure that you are saying, can we count on your support? Um, you know, to either vote yes or no. Um, otherwise, you told the story and there was no, um, there was no sort of like point of saying, yeah, and based on our story, we are asking you to take an action, right, with your power to vote. Um, so again, uh, this was a lot and we don't want to take up too much time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask Mohammed to get us to the next slide. And um, I'm going to hand it over to one of our esteemed colleagues up in Sacramento, um, Amir Rashid, who is our government and legislative affairs manager for CARE California. And what we're going to be doing is Amir is going to be telling us about one of the bills that is um, a major legislative priority for California. And and we are going to actually be doing a little practice of what we were talking about with storytelling after we learn about this bill and this topic. So Amr, over to you. Awesome, so I welcome everyone and uh, really awesome that, to see everyone here and kind of see this audience and see this number of people really interested in engaging um, in advocacy, right? Um, so I'm really, really excited for what that means for our community. Um, and how to see that grow, that number of people grow. Uh, as Elisa said, this bill here is gonna be kind of one of our primary focuses. Uh, one of the bills that we'll be looking at during MDAC and it's something that we are sponsoring this year. So we're kind of leading the effort on in the legislature um, and helping kind of build the coalition and get that support and make sure the votes are for it. So that's gonna be part of why it's in this, this um, MDAC capacity. Um, when, what we're going to kind of do here and what I'm going to walk through in these bullets is basically what I think is what everyone might want to do anytime you're trying to uh, analyze any piece of legislation. So maybe you identify something just in your own time that's federal legislation or a different state bill. Um, I, I think these are the types of questions and things you want to look for to really get that full picture of any piece of legislation. And so I think for the first part is, is the why. Like what is, why is someone backing this bill? And in this case, why are we backing this bill, right? And so what um, AB 412 would do is create a California Commission on Human Rights. Um, and so this commission would be an independent body that would be able to oversee and report on the status of human rights across California, looking at, you know, how are we operating in human rights in certain department programs that we're running in our schools, um, in, in police force, all of these different areas and interests where public dollars and public interest is at play. Um, and then we'll get to review that and then report on it. 
and say, hey, legislature, we've identified these problems that maybe you want to, you know, legislate on to, to fix those problems or mitigate for those human rights concerns. Or, hey, department X, Y, and Z, you know, we noticed that because of how you were monitoring this particular program, this issue arose, and this is how you can fix for it. And so it'd be a commission of those experts. Uh, and that's obviously really tied back to kind of our core values in a lot of way, right? If we're fighting uh, for, for human rights, if we're an organization that really wants to end things like discrimination, right? Increase equality, defeat Islamophobia, to be anti-racist and all these other things. Um, this is you know, going to be an incredible vehicle for us to be able to do that and advocate through. Currently in the state of California, there is no entity that actually even defines human rights, right? So we have civil rights, which are often tied to our constitutions, things of that nature, but human rights are often much more expansive um, and allow us to really get into the, the nitty gritty of, of a lot of this anti-hate initiative that we really want to focus on, right? Um, the next big question is, is, you know, that kind of covers, I guess, the motivation and impact. The next big question is movement. And so something um, that anyone can look at when they're looking at a bill is you have access to where that bill is at in real time, to what that language is currently looking like or what folks are currently voting on. All of that is available to you on in California on something known as Ledge Info. And I think um, someone might be able to drop the link in a little bit to that. But Ledge Info is a public website for folks to access to look at any piece of California legislation, including this one right here, AB 412. And in that space, you'll actually be able to identify and see um, where the bill currently stands. And so for example, most bills or all bills will have to go through committees to get voted on and, and you know, through that process before they ever end up um, in the floor and finally voted on. Uh, and that's where this bill is currently. And that's where all, you'll find all legislation at this stage of the year. Um, and this bill is in the committee, the Assembly Committee of Accountability and Administrative Review. It's always, I always mix up accountability and administrative there, but that's what it is. Um, and it's kind of the committee that oversees that realm of policy. So all of the different commissions, all the different structures of government, you know, all these different governance issues are gonna be reviewed by that committee. Likewise, if you had a bill that was uh, focused on education, it would go to the education committee and so on and so forth. And so knowing where that bill is is important because it knows how to focus um, and who to focus on when you're advocating. Uh, the next question is, you know, who's involved? Who's having a stake in the game and who's having a conversation? It's always important to know on any piece of legislation who the sponsors are. Because most often, not always, but a lot of the time, bills actually start with the sponsor and are then shopped around in the legislature and saying, you know, hey, assembly member, or hey, senator, this is an issue that's really important to our community. This is a policy that we think can really assist. Here's the research and the community organizations that support it. Is this something that you'd be able to work on? And maybe that community member or that assembly member has a history of working on those issues, is familiar with that issue, and, and then that helps move uh, that policy, right? And so recognizing who the sponsor is means where is this idea really, who's really leading that effort, right? Alongside, of course, the author. Because at the end of the day, the bill is the author's. And so the author may decide, you know what, I'm gonna change this bill entirely, or I disagree here, or I disagree there. And so whoever is the author of the bill is also incredibly significant, as you can imagine, because they're the ones really doing, making the decisions at the end of the day on what's in the legislation. And lastly are all the others. And by others, I mean who's supporting and who's opposing. Um, and so you have a lot of organizations who maybe they're not sponsors, maybe they're not actively engaged in the coalition, but you know that they've supported, officially supported this piece of legislation. They'll probably have a reason or analysis as to why. And actually maybe even more importantly is who's opposing, right? Who is taking the time to say this cannot happen and, and taking that energy, because that takes a lot of uh, a lot more labor than sending in just a letter and saying, I support this effort, right? So who's opposing and why? Um, and developing those arguments give you a, a good idea um, of where the bill is at. In our case, for AB 412, we have no opposition to the California Commission on Human Rights, which is uh, good to know at this point in time. Our author is Majority Leader Assembly Member Eloise Gomez Reyes. Uh, and as sponsors alongside of us, we were actually uh, really gr grateful to have the Western Center on Law and Poverty and Churla, the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights. Um, 
oh my gosh, now I'm forgetting the L and the A. SHRLA uh, is the acronym. I, I work in acronyms now after working with policy for so long, um, are both uh, our co-sponsors with us on this piece of legislation. Um, and then as with anything, you want to look at potential obstacles. And with things like this, building a new commission means more money, right? It's an extra cost, right? Looking at all of these different analyses. Um, so I'm going to stop there. I think I went well over my time. Um, I think what are we going? Again, like Samina had mentioned, you know, we actually ask that people hop on to the Zoom at least 15 minutes early when we actually are having these meetings so that we can practice, right? So um, the more you practice, the more kind of um, confidence you build is our experience. And um, we're gonna go ahead and start to close out. So if we could go to the last slide, please, or the next slide. Um, but yeah, thank you so much everybody for joining again. Um, we really appreciate you kind of, um, uh, you know, participating in this sort of experimental <laughs> uh, Zoom interactive um, that we that we've done today. And again, we really encourage everybody if you have not <laughs> if you have not yet signed up for um, Muslim Day at the Capitol. So um, what it is is it's going to be happening virtually. It's going to be happening over a week at the end of May after Ramadan, well after Ramadan. And so um, if you haven't signed up and you're not really sure what it's about and you are still thinking about it, you can definitely go to carecapitalday.com um, and learn more and, and get signed up. Um, we would love to have you. And that's open to anybody, um, you know, from our community in California. It's not restricted to just Muslims. Um, we welcome our friends and allies as well. And, uh, you know, we would really love to see you again. So, um, you know, we appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and giving us that feedback. We're definitely going to be, you know, using it. And um, again, we're gonna be having multiple workshops from different local care offices like ours um, and from Care California. So please stay tuned for that. And if you haven't yet, you can sign up for updates um, on our website. So you can go to ca.care.com um, if you are outside of the Bay Area or you can go to care.sfba.com um, if you are in the Bay Area and you're not already connected.